Good morning, everyone. Let's start our uh, Thursday class. And we just started a new Upanishad last week. So we'll start uh, from the second verse today. But let's do the prayers first. Om Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo, Maheshwaraha, Guru Sakshat Parbrahma, Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha, Om Bhavaswaha, Tatsavitra Varenayam, Bargo Deva Sedhi Mahi, Dio Yonaha Prachodayat, Astoma Satgamya, Tamsoma Jyotir Gamya, Mrityurma Amritam Gamya, Om Sahna Vavatu, Sahna Bhunatu, Saviriyam Karvavahi, Tejasvi Navadhi Tamastu, Mavidvi Shavahi, Om Shanti 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 Om. In these classes, uh, we do study our uh, Upanishads and uh, uh, we talk about a lot of uh, other deep topics. All that can help us, all that can make us better human beings. If you remember some other things also, okay, it's like a day to day, we need to watch. Are we transforming? Are we becoming better people or not? I'm going to give you five uh, things to remember before we start the Upanishad. Number one is, do we take time to help others? Even if we are struggling with own personal problems, still we can find time to help others. If you are doing it, we are definitely learning from these great books. Number two, help people even when you know they can't help back. Because ordinarily we think that, hey, if somebody helps me, only then I'm gonna help. No, help them even if you know that they cannot help you back. That's a sattviki help. Otherwise, it's a Raj Sikhi help, business relationship. And also remember, number three, that we can't help everyone, but everyone can help someone. Let me repeat it. We cannot help everyone, but everyone can help someone. So try to help someone. What happens uh, when we are helping somebody? In return, we get the blessings. So number four is you never know where a blessing can come from. Even though blessing is not in your mind, but you never know. Next one is never stop doing little things for others. Because sometimes those little things occupy the biggest part of their heart. Okay, so it seems little, but a person, you're touching that person's heart. And the last one is helping one person might not change the world but it could change the world for one person. Helping one person might not change the world because sometimes we think we cannot change the world, but it could change the world for one person. So that's why every day I think about, uh, did I help somebody today? You will see that uh, how fast the transformation happens uh, when we are going out of our way to help somebody. And there's so many different ways we can help. 
God has given us unique talents. Use that talent to help somebody. Okay? So then you'll see that all these Upanishads and the great books, they will speak to us. These won't be just the words. They will be live for us. Live. Okay? So let's look at this Shvetashtva Upanishad. And we saw in the first verse, the, it is, it's like a, a group discussion. And the students are asking these questions. What is the ultimate cause of this world? Is it Brahma? Where have we come from? How do we live? Where do we exist or go after death? Or knowers of the reality? That means the Rishi, they are asking these questions. Under whose governance do we follow the rule regarding joy and sorrow? Okay, so in this Upanishad, we'll see that answers to these questions. In this beautiful discussion and also what kind of a discipline we need to cultivate. Okay, so what is the ultimate cause? In the second verse, because this first verse we did, second verse we were, we just started. Kalaha sobhavo niyati yadrichaha bhutani yoni purusha iti chintaya sanyoga esham natu atam bhavat atma api anisha sukh dukh hetu. So these are different terms. They say the time, kal, inherent nature, the law of karma, chance, five elements, intelligence. Neither these nor a combination of these can be ascertained as the ultimate cause of the world. Because of the existence of the individual self, but the individual self also cannot be the cause of the world being subject to joy and sorrow. Okay, We looked at, uh, so these are all various uh, factors which can be considered. People might think that these are the cause. So this uh, debate is upon all these different factors. So call, call is not, time is not the ultimate cause. We saw that. Because without events happening in space, time would not exist. So time is not independent. And time is part of the creation. So the cause of which is the subject of our inquiry. And we also see that time changes. It appears, it disappears. So the experience of time feels different in the different time zones and measured differently. We know that in the deep sleep, there is no concept of time at all. So if time itself is created, how can it be the cause of creation? Okay, this is what we are learning. And the second one, he said, so bhav. Inherent nature of a thing. So, how as the cause also stands refuted because the object and its essential nature coexist and are inseparable. But by the theory of cause and effect, the cause exists before the effect. But on the other hand, the inherent nature does not exist before the object and then create the object that cannot exist apart from, see, just like a fire. The heat of the fire, that is the sabhav of the fire, cannot exist before the fire. So sabhav is not the cause for the fire. So all the properties of the objects may change 
And last time I gave you the example of milk. Milk can become a yogurt, which has different properties. A changing cause cannot be the ultimate cause. Okay, so we are looking at the ultimate cause of everything. So changing cause cannot be. Then the next one is niyati, the nature's laws. Niyati. Because it seems like that nature's laws are governing everything in the world. We say natural laws, like the fire burns. Dog gives birth to a puppy. So the results we get when the laws are broken are also governed by the nature's laws. Like weather changes due to global warming, caused by carbon emissions. But are they the ultimate cause? Think about it. See, the nature's laws, niyati, come to manifest along with the objects governed by the laws, but they do not create them. See, for example, the law of gravity did not create the solar system which is governed by it, being a part of creation. So the law does not exist before the creation. So the niyati cannot be the cause of the creation. So they are interdependent and not absolute. Because laws are many. And they govern different objects in different circumstances. And if the law is there, there must be a lawmaker. <laughs> and the lawmaker existed before the law and created the law. And also a law upholder who sees that it functions. So niyati cannot be the cause. We also translate niyati as a fate also, destiny or luck also. But fate is also governed by the law of cause and effect. So that cannot be the cause, the ultimate cause. The next is Yadricha. So creation cannot be caused by a mere accident. Yadricha means accident over here. Because sometimes it seems like that events happen quite suddenly. We all know that a lot of predictions are made in the world and they go wrong. <laughs> Some scientists, they postulate uh, like accident, Big Bang as the cause. But it does not seem right to think that such a well-ordered world, which runs by the nature's laws, could come into being by accident, like a Big Bang. Some people might be too lazy to go deeper into finding the cause. Okay, the yogis, they always, they are never lazy. The most active. And they kept on going towards the cause. So creation cannot be causeless or mere chance. It cannot be the cause of everything leave alone the ultimate cause of the world. Cannot be niyati. Then he talks about, he says, Bhutani and Yoni. Bhutani means the matter and Yoni means the energy. Matter and energy cannot be the ultimate cause. We know that the whole world is made up of energy and matter.
matter over here means the ultimate or the fundamental elements. And energy is like a unifying energy. So they say that, no, this could be the cause. But we know that matter and energy are interchangeable and interdependent. Matter and energy are inseparable from the world and they are part of the world, are created and ever-changing and are known by us. So they cannot be the ultimate cause of the world because we know the matter and we know the energy. And how about the Purusha? Purush cannot be the ultimate cause either. Over here, this Purush really means uh, the intellect. That is part of the nature. So mind and the intellect instrument. Because sometimes we think that could be the cause of all. We even say that world exists in our thoughts, sustained by them and merges back into them. We know that all the discoveries are made by the intellect and all the joys and sorrows are experienced there. However, if we look deeper, thoughts are part of creation and cannot exist without objects of the world. So objects are needed to have the thoughts. They come to existence, keep changing all the time and are inert, objects are inert and they are known by us. So they are not the cause of the creation. How about a combination of all these, Sanyoga? All these factors put together, could that be the ultimate cause? This does not seem logical. Because the cause proceeds the effect. They have to be existed before creation for them to create together. Just take an example of the car. A car is assembled, each part, you can put it together. Car is there, but is car is assembled for the sake of the engine, which is a part of the car? We know that it's not. So factors like time, space, matter, energy are inert and combined to form the world which is experienced by a sentient entity apart from them. Because whatever comes together, in time it can disintegrate also. So a combination of many factors cannot be the one ultimate cause of the world. And how about the individual self, Atma? It cannot be the cause either. Because word Atma here means not that Brahma which we talk about, but it is the finite being Jivatma, individualized soul. The individual self, the entity which experiences this world. See, Jeevatma experiences joy and sorrow. But the Atma, Shuddha Buddha Atma is no different than Brahm. So we are not talking about the Shuddha Buddha Atma. Because it is not separate from Brahm. We are talking about Jeevatma. But a person might say, am I not the creator of my own world? Can I experience the universe if I individual did not exist? 
Do I not create my own joy and sorrows? So students are confused. Truth being changeless cannot be the cause of this ever-changing world. Remember that. And the factor like time or matter being finite, created and changing cannot be the cause. Since creation exists, it must have a cause. So what do we do? What is the answer? Every field of knowledge has its own way of knowing. We all have a certain kind of a skill and we mastered those skills with practice. See, like if somebody wants to write a poetry, or even somebody wants to read a poetry, you can appreciate only through the language. So you need to know the language. And also the emotions. Logical reasoning and intellectual discussion did not give these students the answer to these questions. Because answers to these deep questions cannot come from the mind and the intellect. Because they wanted to know the ultimate cause of the world. So their guru said, only in the seat of meditation, you can realize the infinite truth. You can also get in touch with this power behind all this, which you cannot explain in the words. So that's why in the next verse we see, they did what their guru told them. Te dhyan yog anugata apashin. Dev atma shaktim swa mune ni gudam. Ya karnani nikhlani tani. Kalatma yuktani adhishtati ekaha. Te means they. Dhyan yog anugata. Following the path of the meditation. So it's not just one time sitting and meditating or going to a meditation retreat, following the path of the dhyan. That means you follow the path until you reach there. If you want the answers to these questions, the deep questions, you should just stay with it. Keep on thinking about it day and night. It's like an all-consuming. A passion saw Devatma Shaktim, the power of the Lord. Swagune, by its own qualities. Ni Gudam, hidden. Ya means who? Karnani causes, Nikhilani all. Tani those. Kal Atma Yuktani, starting with the time up to the individual self. So that means all those terms which we learned in the last verse, starting from the call up to the individual self, Jivatma. Adhishtati presides over Ekaha alone. Following the path of meditation, the students saw the power of the Lord. So they saw it. So Guru just did not tell them. Guru just told them that, hey, go meditate. And these students, they followed the instructions of the Guru. So following the path of meditation, the students saw the power of the Lord hidden by its own inherent qualities. So power of Lord is hidden. Can we even see electricity? Even these material things, when they are subtle, we cannot see. How can we see power of Lord with these gross eyes? We have to meditate. The Lord who alone presides over all the causes. 
from time to the individual self. Let's look at path of meditation. Dhyan Yoga. We know that in order to be successful in the worldly pursuits, we have to work hard. Similarly, we have to put forth the right efforts on the path of meditation too. It's not going to happen with certain grace or somebody touches your head. No, you got to make an effort. However, the nature of efforts to know the infinite truth is completely different. So the truth is realized by following the path of meditation. In Kavalya Upanishad, the Guru said, know the truth by faith. So if you don't have a faith, meditation alone won't help. Faith, devotion, and the path of meditation. Shraddha, bhakti, dhyana, yogadi, avahi. So you have to have faith. You have to have devotion. That means love also. Without love, you won't be able to achieve anything. It's not like, like a burden of, oh, I got to meditate also now. No. Oh, gosh, I, I am thrilled that I can meditate. Looking forward to your meditation time. See, just like we love our children, grandchildren, when they are coming, we are thrilled to meet them or someone we love deeply. We are looking forward to meeting. Meditation should be the same way or even more so. You are meeting your beloved, the ultimate beloved, on your meditation seat. That is devotion. It's not just another chore. This is something to look forward to. In meditation, we, we draw our attention from the world, the body, the pran, the mind, the intellect, and the ego. We detach from all that. And we just be. If you are a seasoned meditator, you know this is the easiest thing to do. But in order to become a seasoned meditator, you have to practice though. We all have to start from somewhere. In that state of pure being, the truth and its power is revealed spontaneously. It doesn't take that long. Bhagavad Puran describes a similar incident. We all know that Rishi Vyas, he wrote Mahabharat, so many Purans, but he was not fully fulfilled. Sage Narad came. He asked him to write about the divine Leelas of Lord. But how does he do that? Rishi Vyas meditated. In a state of deep absorption, which is called Samadhi, he saw the divine powers of the Lord and how it created the world. Now we can read in that great scripture in detail how this world was created. And where did he Get this knowledge? Meditation. Then he says, Devatma Shakti, the divine power of God or truth. This phrase, Devatma Shakti, I would call it a phrase actually. This is phrase has rich layers of meaning. So that means the students realized in meditation that there was a creative power behind all creation. 
and its locus was the infinite truth, Dev Atma Shakti. The infinite truth has an infinite potential to create. And this uh, inscrutable divine power is called uh, Maya or Prakriti. So the infinite truth, you can call it a Brahm if you want to, associated with Maya is the cause of the world. So it becomes both the material as well as the sentient cause of creation. So the various factors like time, inherent nature, nature's laws, matter and energy are manifestations of Maya. All those terms which we learned in the previous verse are the creations of Maya you can call. Next term is the relationship between God or you can call it a truth or Brahma and his power, Maya. What is this relationship? Definitely this relationship is difficult to understand because it's said that the truth is one without a second and attributeless so that how can there be truth and Maya its powers? Because power itself is an attribute. Also, does Maya have a separate existence from God? Or is it one with the truth? Maya cannot exist separate from truth. Because the truth is the nature of existence. Anything other than existence cannot exist, then Maya must be one with the truth. If so, does it become the truth itself? But we don't, we know that Maya, we cannot say that Maya is the truth, like a Brahma. Then maybe it does not exist at all, the Maya. But creation exists. It's cause the creative power also must exist. This power must exist in the infinite truth alone. So that's why we say that power is inscrutable. That means a nirvachaniya and enjoys an indescribable relationship with the truth. So you cannot describe it. You have to just experience it. Tulsi Das Ji in Ramayan said, he expressed this whole thing, Maya and the Brahma beautifully. Because he says it's a separate yet not separate. It's a bhin also, it's a separate and it's not separate either. So this relationship becomes clearer through the example. When I say my book or my notebook, the book is separate from me. And it has its own existence. But my power of hearing, power of smelling or speaking is not separate from me. And cannot exist without me. So I can remain without speaking, but my power to speak exists in me and because of me. So that is the relationship between the truth of the Brahm and all these Maya, if you want to call. Maya is called Devatma Shakti because it belongs to God. And it exists because of him. And in God, this power lies dormant. And it expresses as a creation. So it's God's power. So God is said to be presiding over. And Maya 
creates the world. In Gita, in chapter 9, verse number 10, you can go and look at it. Maya adhyakshen prakriti suyate sachar achar. So from the standpoint of Brahma, Maya does not exist. Yama sa Maya. That which does not exist is Maya. When we look at it from the absolute point, so that's why Maya is not an attribute of the Brahma. Yet from the standpoint of the world, the creation, it is a divine power of God which exists in God and creates the world. It is indeed difficult to comprehend. With our material mind, we cannot comprehend it. We got to transcend this material mind and intellect to understand this all. Then he says, Swagune Nigudam, hidden by its own qualities. So this infinite divine potential power of God remains hidden by its own exist expression. And it veils the truth. See, almost like a sometimes sun is so bright. And the sun is a hidden because of its own effulgence. It is so bright, you cannot see sun. So Maya has the qualities of Sattva, Rajas, and Tamas. So Maya creates the five elements with the help of these qualities, special qualities of sound, touch, color, form, taste, and smell. So this variety in the world is due to the permutation and combination of the three qualities and five elements with their special qualities. So creation indeed hides both the power of Maya as well as the truth, the Brahm. We cannot see either one of them. We experience the fascinating creation and not the power and truth behind it. We can see the beautiful form, but we cannot see the power behind that form. It's hidden. So the elusive power can only be known along with the truth through meditation. That's why these students, what did they do? They meditated further. Because they were not satisfied just with this. They wanted to go deeper than this. And in their deep meditation, what did they envision? What did they experience? They saw this truth and the Brahm as a wheel, a chakra. Through that wheel, they saw the various aspects of creation. So wheel is like a metaphor for us over here. And we'll see that in next verse, verse number four, they are describing what they saw with their deep meditation. Still they are looking for the creation or the creator or how this whole thing came about. Tam ek nimim trivritam shod shantam Shata dharam vishatihi pratyarabhi ashtakai shadbhi vishvarupe pasham tri marg bhedam dvi namit ek moham. Tam means him. Ek nemim having one rim. Tri vritim with three tires. Shodash Antham, having 16 extremities. Shat Arth Aram, having 50 spokes. 
विश्वति प्रत्यग विश्वति प्रत्यह राभि विद ट्वेंटी फैसनर्स अष्ट कै षड भी विद सिक्स सेट्स ऑफ एट विश्व रूपे एक पाशम अ बेल्ट और ए कोर्ड दैट इज सिंगल येट मेनी फोल्ड थ्री मार्ग भेदम हैविंग थ्री डिफरेंट पैट्स द्वी निमित्त एक मोहम विद ए सिंगल डिल्यूजन that gives rise to duality you can see that very hard to understand verses like that from the upanishads unless we really open it up and see what do they really mean they saw so these students in their dhyan him tam him as a wheel so brahm as a wheel they saw that's why i said it's a metaphor they saw a wheel having one rim three tires 16 extremities 50 spokes 20 fasteners six sets of eight strengthening it a belt or cord that is a single yet many fold driven along three different paths and a single delusion like each revolution of the wheel that gives rise to duality this almost like a duality means the merit and sin leading to happiness and sorrow duality sometimes we are dukhi sometimes we are sukhi there is a in the next verse because this verse and the next verse they go together so in the next verse you see the last word is there is a word adhima adhima means we know so that's how we know that they knew this they experienced this okay that is like a governing verb of both of these verses adhima so it indicates that this understanding of the truth has arisen from the deep meditation so it's not coming out of their intellectual thinking or some kind of a fascination or imagination no this is what they experienced in deep meditation so brahma chakra the wheel of truth or you can call it a wheel of creation sansar chakra so wheel of creation is a sansar chakra and the wheel of truth is brahma chakra okay so we can understand it through this chakra after meditation it is the substratum of this creation and is all inclusive i'll go very slowly because this verse will might take us two or three classes okay remember everything in creation is a cyclical like the way the wheel rotates it rotates and it moves forward and we know that days follow nights monday morning pretty soon we know it's a sunday evening the months keep on changing the years keep on rotating not only the years the yugs the galaxies rotate and creations dissolve to reemerge all super imposed on this changeless truth which is called brahma so the substratum of all these changes the brahma the truth in our katha upanishad study the yamraj ji said that like seasonal crops man dies to be born again and again it's like a cycle just like crop we see ek nemi 
the rim. The wheel exists within the rim, which alone leaves an impression on the ground as it rotates. So the rim over here symbolizes the inscrutable divine infinite potential power of God. That's only one. God is one. And it manifests as this world. That's why we use the word Maya, Prakriti, Chaya, Pradhan, Avyakta, Avyakrit, Avidya. In different contexts, we use these words. But Brahm is one. <coughs> Truth is one. Three Vrit, the three tires. So this Wheels of a big vehicle have three tires. Each tire strengthening and facilitating the rotation. The huge wheel of truth, which includes the entire creation, is triple tired. With the three qualities we are familiar with. They constitute the divine power of God as a sattva, goodness, and knowledge. As rajas, activity. And tamas, inertia and ignorance. It can also be understood as the kal, desh, and karan. Kal is the time, desh is the space, and karan is the causation. So whether you understand it from the gunas or whether you understand with the kal, desh, and karan, that's how this creation is being governed. Sixteen extremities. Shotas and Ant means the end, shortest, solar extremities. So the circular form of a wooden wheel of a chariot is made with several smaller pieces of wood. They have been cut, shaped, fixed together. And this wheel of truth has 16 such parts. That's how this shape has been given to the creation. And what are these 16 parts? Five elements. Panchbhutani. Prithvi, Jal, Agni, Vayu, Akash. Five Gyan Indriya, the sense organs. Five Karm Indriya. And the mind. Five, 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 and one. Sixteen. We know that mind is the inner instrument which thinks, feels, and coordinates the other instruments. So these are the 16 extremities they saw. Next week, we will start with the 50 spokes. 50 spokes. I'll explain it to you. 5 plus 28 plus 9 plus 8. Altogether 50. I'll tell you which one are those. But I would suggest 5, 28, 9, and 8. So, in that, if you can add it up, that is 50. So, these are the 50 spokes for this wheel. So, this is like a metaphor, and this is what they experienced in their meditation. It's pretty fascinating, actually, the depth of it all. But what do we need to do? We should meditate. Meditation is, uh, should be very important to us. Just like a prayer is very important to us, meditation is very important to us. And the other things I told you today, try to help others, uh, do some seva. When I mentioned those six things to remember in the beginning of the class, 
that is all about seva actually. And what were those six? Make some time to help others. Even if you are struggling with your own problems, still make time to help others. You will forget about your problems and you will receive the grace of God. Help people even when you know they can't help back. That was number two. We know that we cannot help everyone, but everyone can help someone. Okay, don't think that it is so big of a problem. Just break it down, help someone. You never know where a blessing will come from. Because we know that Brahm is everywhere, God is everywhere. When we pour ourselves out to help someone, creator is him, he is the father. Father will be very happy. Blessing will come. Number five, never stop doing little things for others. Sometimes those little things occupy the biggest part of their heart. A little thing. We don't have to move the mountains. A little thing. And the last one I told you, helping one person might not change the world, but it could change the world for one person. So every day, go out of your way. to help someone. Then we'll see that we will be able to meditate. Just like these students of this great Upanishad. Let's end the class here today. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadai Purnam Eva Visheshyate Om Shanti 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 Om Thank you very much.